Hi everyone! We will try now to solve one very complicated paradox. And this paradox lies in the problem which is related to the representation of negation of the personality, of the character. If we want to, to draw a person recognizable personality or character, then we cannot show, we cannot show the relations so easy then we will directly stick to some characters that we may be recognized through all kind of forms or portraits or ideas. So the question is how to solve the paradox and how to negate the personality or the individual, but in the same time to represent it. So, we will try to negate this concept of representation of the portraits, of the individuals, of the personal characters, and we will try to do this now. So, we will use some very known persons, maybe for somebody who are dealing with epistemology, with philosophy and all kinds of theoretical issues. I mean, let's start with very simple uh, and very known portrait of one character, one individual. We will try to do this with a portrait of German philosopher Hegel. So let's try to draw Hegel's portrait in a very, let's say, wide, uh, wide, uh, complex, let's say, option. Mm -hmm. Hegel had blue eyes, uh, there are like a lot of representation of him and he had blue eyes uh, on the most of the photos and uh, a lot of characteristics which are maybe recognizable, maybe not. So this can be very interesting for us to to sketch here and to represent. So let's try to deal with this on a different level. So you know that uh, coin, uh, Hegel is known for coining the term Weltgeist. It's not Zeitgeist, it's Weltgeist, it's something different than the, the, the Zeitgeist. <laughs> and the Weltgeist is, that means actually, world spirit. And world spirit is something which is not individual. This is something which is practically abstract. It is there, it is, uh, it is somewhere, but it is abstract. So it is... This term is interesting for our session and our activities here, what we try to do. So we will now um, go to another uh, philosopher, actually the performer of philosophy, and his name is Slavoj Žižek. And Slavoj Žižek is actually, I call him performer of philosophy. And he is actually a follower of Hegel, in a way. He defended Hegel in front of many other, um, like for example, in front of the people who are promoting, um, let's say, open, open society concepts, or who are promoting different issues. And he defended the Hegel, as well as Marcuse did long ago in his famous book, The Mind and Revolution. So, Žižek is interesting here for us because he is connected with Hegel in this transhistoric flow and Žižek is in a way another personality which can be interesting for us in this session. He has very interesting face, looks like Socrates, because he, he looks like this epic philosopher, but in the same time he is against 
this epic position of the philosophy, he likes to negate this. So, perfect character to connect him with the Hegel and to, to try to connect him with this transhistorical idea and narrative. So he has, of course, moustache and a lot of hairy elements. This is maybe too dark now for the beginning, but we will later on come to the point where it is very good element who can maybe function well in this. So, and how they are, two of them are connected? I would say they are connected with, let's say, um, with this transhistoric flow. It is a kind of organic flow. This is a transhistoric correlation between Zizek and Hegel, and um, it is this is this correlation is actually very strong one. And um, the portraits are connected in this trans transhistorical history of ideas, and we will now try to to make this abstract flow, and then those two portraits will not be interesting anymore for us. This will be the main aspect of this drawing. We can just go into this kind of elements, maybe add a progress to it, some other organic flows which, are, which can relate to it, because this is a kind of weltgeist moment. Maybe car industry, which is here. Maybe pharmacy, the industry of pharmacy. It's like we can just tackle some of those issues. Finances, which is like everywhere, you know, like with the blue. The pharmacies we can represent with some kind of, of these arrows, which are going everywhere and are connecting them in a way. and trying to breed between them and so this is this is quite quite interesting and very and very very well connected so we will see how to end this. We are still not finished, uh, but what is left actually here is to draw the draw the face of of Hegel and Zizek, to draw their portraits, and then to connect them much better in this in this organic flow of the transhistorical history of the ideas and then we will come to the question how to draw the Weltgeist at the end. But before them let's finish those two very nice but in a way complicated portraits then we can address the proper these issues of the of the Weltgeist.
in the most abstract form of today, which is coming from both of them. We need a bit of stronger accent and also here. Because we have a couple of historical photos of them, but especially of Hegel, but not really a photo, but a paintings, historical paintings, which can maybe tell us how he looked like. And he had this, so to say, uh, quite proper European male expression. He looks almost like Benjamin. Franklin or Theodore Roosevelt or something like that. So it's very he's 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 quite he has quite strong expression and we know what is to expect out from this strong, uh, let's say, uh, authoritar even authoritarian kind of expression of the face. And some kind, some, some fur, which gives a lot of to this, na to this narration and bring us to the, to the special to the special, even anecdotical approach toward the fashion of that time. So, we are approaching to his, maybe a couple of elements which can, which can upgrade his age to another, to a different scale, and then we will go to Slavoj's appearance. He is more like relaxed, he looks even like a geek, Socrates or something like that, and so we can draw him easy and is that he has very special kind of appearance here and with the hair it's like very very cool so And yes, moustache and all these things that we have to draw because we are dealing with the face of a philosopher and not with the face of some guy who is not here, who is young or something like that. So, so we are going... Uh, we are approaching almost to the end of this. A couple of effects we need to finish. Yes, so he is almost done. It's, it's a naturalistic, naturalistic approach. And we will see how to connect two of them now. He has a t-shirt, which are often just black, with something like on his t-shirt, like Starbucks or something, he's promoting some brands, but um, let's see how he can, how we can connect them here. Oh my god, are they trying to touch each other? Yes, but the history is very long. And this trans-historical possibility is not there anymore. Because in between are many things. 
many abstract things. Hmm. We will see now how to end this. It is still not clear what will happen. We are still... It is actually still huge question what will happen here. I still don't know. Let's see, because it is too abstract. It is a flow, organic flow. It has a lot of... It is... <laughs> a lot of history was between those two figures, characters. I don't know. Let's think a bit and we will call some colors into and we will try to, to help. Ah, red is always good, huh? With red we can do something. I mentioned this car industry. This must be blue. Car industry must be blue and with this we can maybe solve the situation and lot of finances between. Yes. We need to think about this and we need also to repair some elements like for example this fur of, of Hegel. It really gives another dimension to this drawing and also maybe some some also elements related to his hair also good to tackle and then 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 maybe we need also to do something which is quite important now and to see how we can get out from this abstraction of the world spirit, which will negate those two portraits. with symbols, with different strategies and how we can get out from this situation of negating them. Because to represent the, the, the non-individual character of the world spirit, we must make deep changes and exclude both particular characters aside, focusing now on the essence of the flow and leave the flow to flourish. The world spirit is maybe in this moment too pathetic, but never mind. This just the beginning of this element that we will easily calling into the abstraction. Hey, it's something. You know, we need a bit of a bit of elements and also some symbols.
which are there but we can still cannot recognize them is this a star or not? what is this? we still don't know it is something which belongs to the world spirit but it's still, still not a symbol it is still too abstract to say okay we must end now with the contemporary and this contemporary element it's not the element from where we started but the element which is connected to Slavoj Žižek appearance and his destiny of philosophy performance and black t-shirt here and also hand which is fading away in this qualities of the abstraction of the world spirit so it's not about zeitgeist, it's about world spirit, it's about weltgeist, it's something different, it belongs to Hegel, not belongs to, you know, Goethe or somebody else. Okay, I think that star is must be recognizable. And this also must be recognizable in a way. And this is this abstraction of the finances. Okay. I think that we are finished with this. And uh, I hope that this one is interesting for you and that we managed to tackle those two issues and to solve this paradox of how to represent or not to represent the portraits and how to find something which is not individual but by representing the individual